Hey there, let's talk about tuning today. So I know, I know, it's really scary to think about tuning your own instrument, especially with the pegs, but you can do this and I'm gonna show you how. So let's start with the basics. How often should you tune and when would your instrument get really out of tune? Really, you should check it every day. Is it in tune with itself? So are the strings in tune to each other? Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard to play your pieces in tune. Secondly, if you're ever playing with another person, you make sure that you're in tune with them or with a piano, for example, which brings up another point. The piano is actually in a different tuning system. So long ago, when we started to be able to play in all different keys and not just the first three sharps or flats, we change the tuning system so that it compromises each key so the intervals are not incredibly perfect, but that way we can play in every single key. The point here is that our strings must be closer together. We need to have very tight fifths or narrow fifths instead of wider fifths. So you definitely wanna have a tuner or something you're gonna to tune to. So that could be a friend that's playing an A for you, or you can have a tuner. So this is my favorite tuner. It's an Intelli tuner and it's a four in one. This is a metronome and a tuner where it's gonna show you if it's in tune or not with an arrow, as well as a chromatic tuner. It's gonna have three octaves of notes for you here. Fun. I also like this tuner because it has a hygrometer, which tells you how much humidity is in the room. The humidity is what's gonna change your instrument and make it go out of tune very, very often. So especially during weather changes, you're gonna have your instrument going out of tune. The instrument is made of 44 pieces of wood. We have ebony, maple, spruce, and several times we have other pieces of wood as well used on the instrument. So as they expand and contract at different rates, that's why our instrument is gonna go out of tune so easily. Especially during a season change, sometimes your pegs will just pop out because they are contracting and expanding at a different rate than the peg box. This particular instrument has rosewood pegs, so that's a different type of wood than the maple peg box. So first let's talk about using your fine tuners and how to tune up and down to the note. A lot of professional instruments only have one fine tuner on the E string as the pegs are relatively easy to use and th there is a belief that more fine tuners are gonna weigh down the instrument and change its sound. If you are a beginner or in the first five years of playing, I do recommend still having a fine tuner and eventually you can take those off if you are ready. The pegs are more complicated. I will get to that in just a moment, but you want to make sure that you've learned how to tune with the fine tuners first. So now because this one only has one fine tuner, I'm gonna use my viola to show you how to tune with the fine tuners. So when you loosen the fine tuner, it's going to lower the note or loosen the string. When you're tightening the fine tuner, it's going to tighten the string or make it higher. So when you've got your violin or viola up in position, this can seem kind of strange because you're gonna be going away from you to tighten the fine tuner and towards you to loosen the fine tuner. When you're on the cello, you're going to tighten towards you and loosen away from you. Remember, tightening is making it higher, loosening is making it lower. On the double bass, we're gonna tighten away from us and lo loosen towards us. The double bass is a little bit different because it has mechanical tuners. Long ago, they had pegs, but as you can imagine, they were huge and very difficult to move. So as soon as the mechanics came into play in life, we have added mechanical tuners to the bass. The pro way to tune is to have your instrument already up and then to tuck your arm in here so that you can play with your bow hand, which is the right hand, and the left hand can also tune. A lot of times when we start, we'll just play the A and then adjust, like so, but that's gonna take a long time. So if you hold your violin with shoulder and chin, tuck your hand up here, tightening is going to be away from you and loosening is gonna be towards your face on violin or viola. So first we'll get an A going. I also like this tuner because it has a volume so it can play very nice and loud for me. I recommend listening to an A and then matching that pitch because we really need to practice adjusting our ear to match that pitch. And then you're going to double check that you are in tune with the tuner to make sure that you are absolutely correct. So now that we have the A going, we're gonna listen to our open A string. 
and think, hmm, I'm not sure if it's exactly right or not. If you're not sure, the best thing to do is loosen the fine tuner so that you know for sure that you are low. So I'm going to loosen my fine tuner, turning it towards my face so that I know for sure my A is now too low. When it blends into the big sound that you hear, then you'll know, oh, that's actually in tune. Now, like I said, we can have a little variety in there. And so that's why we wanna make sure and check it with our tuner. So once I've gotten my A string in tune, then I'm gonna double check with the tuner to make sure that my tuner is also agreeing with what my ear told me. When you first start to tune, you might wanna do each string that way where you listen to it and then double check with the tuner. That's a good way to start, but that's gonna only get your open strings in tune with the tuner and it won't have the fifths be in tune. The open strings are five notes apart, so we need the, to get the fifths in tune. So we'll play them together, A and D. Again, if we're not sure if it's too high or too low, we're gonna loosen the string that we have not tuned. I'm on a viola right now. So the second string or the D string. I'm intentionally making it too low so that I can then come up. That's where that tight fifth comes in. We want it as close as possible before it starts sounding out of tune. So, that starts sounding out of tune, so I know that's too far. And once I've tuned my entire viola, then I'll double check it with my tuner. just a confirmation to make sure that I would be in tune with other violin and viola friends or if I would be in tune with a piano, making sure that my fifths are tight enough but also in tune with themselves. So on the cello, the pro way to tune is to put the cello on the side of your leg and that way you can play and move the fine tuner at the same time. I'll listen for the A. And it's pretty close right now, but if I'm not sure, I'm gonna intentionally go lower. So I know for sure that it's too low, and now I'm going to bring it up to be in tune. seems to disappear into the sound, then I know that I'm quite in tune. And then I will double check with my tuner. So now I'm gonna tune my fifths, I'm gonna tune my A and my D together. So I'll play the two together. If this is difficult, you can just do something like a fist or a beginning bow hold to make sure that you can hold your, your bow while playing two strings. And I'll come down and I'm going to tune my D because now I'm on a cello and that's the string I'm tuning. If I'm not sure, I'm going to loosen it and then bring it up to be in tune. Sounds like a bagpipe or like a train together there. So I'm going to double check that my fifths are in tune with each other, as well as my open strings are in tune with the tuner. The cello and the bass are much lower than a violin and viola, obviously, so we often use harmonics to tune. So matching harmonics on each string. So this is what that looks like on the cello. You'll use your strongest harmonic, which is halfway through the string here. That's your A harmonic. And then you're gonna go to a one in fourth position on the D string. It's the same harmonic. 
and you'll be matching those harmonics. And matching the next two. And matching the next two. Especially for the C string, this one is quite useful. Not everybody likes to tune this way. It's good to be able to do all the ways to make sure that your cello is in tune with itself. So the bass is a little bit different because it's so much lower than all the other instruments. So it's in fourths. We wouldn't be able to play it if it was in fifths because the strings would be too far away from each other. So the strings are in verse of the violin. So we've got E, A, D, and G. So we will usually tune that A first, just like everybody else in the string family, but we'll often choose a harmonic here, which is an octave higher than that open string. And then if you put your fourth finger down on the next string above, you'll find that same harmonic. So I wanna match those two. I'll be tuning as I go. When I go to the, the E string, I'll use my fourth finger and then one on the E to make sure they're totally perfectly in tune with themselves. Now let's talk about the pegs. So obviously the pegs are much harder and they can break the string much easier. You almost can't break the string at all with your fine tuners. Very, very rarely could you break a string with using your fine tuners. So I recommend getting those fine tuners if you don't have them. And if you've been playing for quite a while and you're ready to try out the pegs, here we go. The pegs are like old fashioned screws. Even Shakespeare's Globe was made from these kinds of tapered pegs. So as you turn the peg, you'll need to push in. This is what they used before screws on tables, chairs, or anything else that they made. So we just use the exact same thing because that's how our instrument was made so long ago. So when you're first starting to use a peg, I would put the violin in front of you so that you can look at the strings and make sure that you're turning the right peg. We're gonna start with our A string, which is our second string now that I'm back on the violin. So we'll want to follow that A string all the way up to make sure that we're gonna turn the correct peg. Remember that you can break a string this way, so on the pegs, we will always go lower first and turn and push inward while we move. So putting it in front of us and making sure to pluck the A, I'm going to loosen it, which means I'm making the peg go towards me. I'll listen for the A. I've loosened it. And I'm gonna go higher a little tiny bit at a time. Now with pegs, if you've gone a little bit too far, there's a couple of different ways that you can work on that string. You can yank on the string, give it a nice wiggle, and you're loosening the string actually. Or if you need to tighten it, you can tighten up here by pushing on the above the nut or pushing below the bridge. And that's gonna tighten it up or loosening, as we've said before, by wiggling the string to make sure that you're in tune. So the pro way would be to use the pegs while you're playing, but again, I would not do that until you, after you've practiced a lot with your pegs. Now, if it sounds pretty good, you can just give it a little wiggle to make it a little bit lower, or pushing on the ends to make it a little higher. So now we're a little too high. I'm gonna loosen a little bit and then double check your tuning with your tuner. Tuning is just like learning to vibrato or learning to shift. We have to do it a lot to practice and to feel confident. So don't worry if the first couple of times you don't feel good, it takes a long time. Make sure to check it every time you're about to play so that you know you're totally in tune and then you've been practicing tuning as well as practicing playing. Happy practicing.